Minari, Minari, you are so great. Make me laugh. You make me cry. Because you are so great. Minari. This is going to be a good day. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you miss out on any new content. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of Minari, if you've seen it, if you didn't see it, if you plan on seeing it, if you don't want to see it, whatever. Let me know if you think it's Oscar worthy. <laughs> damn right it is. Minari is a 2020 American drama film written and directed by Lee Isaac Chung. It stars Steven Yun, Han Yuri, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably messing it up. I'm probably butchering it. Uh, Alan Kim, Noelle Kate Cho, Yoon Ya Jung, and Will Patton. Will Patton. Hey, Will Patton. Minari is a story of a family of South Korean immigrants who try to make it in rural America during the 1980s. The film is actually a semi-autobiographical take on director Lee Isaac Chung's upbringing. <laughs> This movie was so good, so good. Let's let's see, where do I start? <laughs> this movie has such a great story. It's a great family story about just trying to make it, trying to provide, and just trying to do well for your family and just give them a better life. You know, essentially the American, American dream, that whole deal, which is, that's a topic for another day, that whole marketing. You know, we'll talk about that another day. But it's just about providing and being successful enough to provide for your family. That's essentially what the American dream is. That's what everyone's dream is, to just make enough to provide a good life for your family. And everyone can relate to that. It's so well written and so well directed, it's universal. So it could apply to anyone. Anyone can watch this movie and you can relate to this movie. And I think it was a good idea for Lee Isaac Chung to make it more of a universal story just because of the fact that it can appeal to more people and then in that way you can reach more people with the story. Yeah, he could have made it more about the immigrant story, about the, you know, just more appealing, but, and then that's fine. You can do that movie too. I'm not saying you can't do that movie, but I think this was a way to where anyone can watch this and just be like, yeah, I can relate. What's interesting is if you watch this movie, you'll see that the mom and the dad, yeah, they're kind of not exactly on the same page. When they start to clash and they start to go at it, it's because of the stress of what's happening financially and with their situation with the farm. They're not fighting because they don't get along, they're fighting because of all the stress and all the pressure being put on themselves. Just in general, that feeling you get of just you're not doing enough. Everybody can relate to that. And it's interesting because if you watch, you see how they just sort of, it, they're, this family's sort of falling apart. And it's because of money issues and because of situations that like they want to provide for their family and this situation is causing them to just go at it and just rip this family apart. It's heartbreaking to watch but it really puts into perspective what's important in life. In the end it's about your loved ones, your family. What can happen sometimes is they show in this movie is that you can sometimes lose sight of what's important. I want to mean something to my kids and I want to you know, be successful and I want to do great things and, and provide for them so they can have a great life. And kind of life passes you by and everything's happening and your kids are kind of going, I'll take the crappy job if we just go out and just hang out for a little bit. But then again, it's like if you don't provide, you don't, I don't know. I don't know the right answer to these questions. These are really deep questions. This is what happens in this movie. It's a great discussion to have. Yeah, this family will fight and they'll go at each other's throats and they'll say that they hate each other and they'll be mean to each other. And it's like every other family. But when push comes to shove and it comes down to it, you love your family and you're going to be there for them no matter what, because you love them. And this film does a good job of showing that on screen. And this movie does it in such a organic and natural way. It doesn't seem forced. The moments in this movie where that sort of happens, they make you feel that, it's like, oh my God, tearjerker alert. Tearjerker alert, that's all I'm saying. It's like, ugh, mm, mm-hmm, yep. 
You're just doing it. <clears throat> I'm not crying, you're crying. All those feelings that you're supposed to feel are so earned in this movie. It doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel forced. It's not like, okay, this is the part where you feel happy, <laughs> or this is the part when we feel sad. Everything just is done so well and paced so well. So when those moments happen, it's like, oh, well done movie. Oh man, that's, that's heavy. Heavy. Whew. The acting is so good. Everyone in this film is just outstanding. This is one of the best ensemble casts of the year. Everyone plays their part perfectly. Whoa! They picked the two cutest kids in the world. They were casting for this movie and they're looking at it and they're like, yeah, let's get the two cutest kids and let's just put them on screen and just let them work their magic. That's exactly what happens. The little boy especially. That little dude was so funny. He, that kid has so much charisma and just has, as a natural on screen. He was so damn funny. Pretty boy, pretty boy, pretty boy. I'm not pretty, I'm good looking. I hope things work out and he does well because he is a hell of an actor for such a little dude. Keep on going, little dude. Not to mention Yoon Ya-jung as the grandmother. Strong, strong boy. Mm, strong boy. Good Lord, she was outstanding. She provided such a levity to this movie because it's a heavy drama, but it doesn't feel heavy because of the levity and the humor that she brings. I mean, along with the little boy. Yoon Ya-jung is absolutely hysterical in this movie. She's so damn funny but she also is so good in the dramatic scenes as well, which it balances those scenes out. It balances the character out. She is, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna say it. She is my pick for supporting actress. Best supporting actress, she's my pick. Oscar, I hope she wins. I, think, I know some people are talking about Glenn Close and whatever, whatnot, but this is my pick. I'm not saying she's gonna win, but this is my pick. She's my pick. Yoon Ya Jung is my pick for Best Supporting Actress. There, I said it, all right? Not to mention Will Patton. Will Patton does a role that you just don't normally see. I mean, yeah, he's very versatile and he's got a lot of range. This role is just like, oh, all right. Completely just starts like, blah, and you're like, oh, hey, all right, Will Patton. The score in this movie is gorgeous. It's like this great, beautiful piano piece. It's just like, it's so lovely. It's just playing. It's actually in the trailer. You can hear the music in the trailer. It's like this do 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 do. I'm like, like, ah, all right. I feel like in some like, whew. That's what you want from your musical score. You want the score to just bring those scenes up a notch and just take them to like another level. If the score doesn't contribute anything to a scene. That's like, eh, because it's there, but it's not really noticeable. It doesn't really do anything just there. It doesn't have any feeling whatsoever. It's like that. But if it's distracting and if it's not good, it can actually can ruin a scene. This was perfect. Combined with the cinematography, which was great, by the way, I love the cinematography in this film. It's very subtle, like just a lot of just cool looking shots, uh, framing wise, a lot of green, a lot of light green, yellowish green colors, um, and a lot of bright, a lot of hate. It's, like, it's almost like a, a haze is over this film a little bit, if that makes any sense whatsoever. That combined with the score, it's like a hazy, it's like a dream-like thing. So like a like an American dream. Ah, I see what you did there, Liazi Chung. Well played, sir, well played. The score and the cinematography, it lent to the overall feel of the film, which is like this like dreamy, hazy, like quality, like I said before, but it's also very real. It's a very relatable and real story. And it's, it's so impressive how he was able to balance those two out, how you can watch this film and sort of feel those two feelings without really feeling like it's going one way or the other too much. I don't know how else to say, he just did a hell of a job. They all did. Kudos to everyone involved in this film. It's such a good story, good film, um, great film. So overall, I give Minari a very high four and a half out of five. You can't get closer to five. You know what? The hell with it. I'm going five. I'm going five. Minari, five out of five. I did it. I said it. I did it. No turning back now. I said it. I meant it. I meant what I said. It deserves it. What do you want from me? It is a great film. Will it win at the Oscars? I hope so. It's going to be tough, but I think Minari has all the ingredients of what the Oscars tend to go with for best picture. I think that may be my pick. Minari for best picture. 
We'll see. Also, Minari is an A24 film, which I love A24. So if A24 can get Best Picture at the Oscars, everyone stand up, stand up, stand up and appreciate A24. If you like my take on Minari, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace, y'all. For the Ox uh, Oscar, Oscars, 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 Oscars. Ah, uh, shit. I can't talk today. Holes because I don't know. Yeah, see? Ah, okay. Let's get a My brain's like, say this. And my mouth is like, <laughs> no. Drama uh, the drama yeah. Mm hmm. Just relax, Joe. Just focus and speak the goddamn words. How about that? <laughs> what the fuck? What am I doing? Ah. Anything to. Ah. <laughs> Get those, those, you want to take those scenes up a notch. Apparently today we cannot talk about Nori because I cannot speak a fucking word. Thank you. <laughs> what the f so, yeah. The score in this mu ah, <laughs> movie, the score in this movie, the it's a movie. My mouth is still like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? If you like my take on, uh, yeah, if you like my take on social media, it's absolute shit. Updates in the between time. If you like my take on you, reel it back and bring it here. Here we go. Subscribe. <laughs> what the? F my tongue is like fuck you. Follow me on social media for all me. <clears throat> Words are not coming easy today, so use them wisely. Let's just stop it right here. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.